Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. Jesse is continuing his analysis of data collected by our honeypots, this time looking at the usernames collected from our Telnet and SSH honeypots. No huge surprise here that the, the big focus is on root and administrative accounts with about half of the attempts targeting root. There is one interesting anomaly and that's a username of 345GS5662D34 with the same password that makes up about 1% of attempts and ranks as number six. Nothing really well known with this username and password a combination it could just uh, be an attempt to actually identify honeypots that often are allowing logins with whatever username and password the attacker uses so using a username and password combination that's highly unlikely to be used by anybody the attacker may go hunting for honeypots and we've got an interesting blog post by New Zealand security company Pulse Security looking at vulnerabilities in fully disk encrypted Linux setups. Now, the particular setup they're looking here and part which makes it kind of vulnerable is that the setups they looked into are actually automatically able to boot up. That, of course, requires access to the passphrase used to unlock the encrypted disk partition in order to secure the passphrase. It is stored in TPM and then during the boot up, TPM is used to unlock the disk and later the operating system is booted from this disk. The problem that's being exploited here is that there is a small window of opportunity between the disk being unlocked and the operating system fully being booted. This is also enabled due to a sort of fallback uh, option here where a user is able uh, to enter a passphrase in case, for example, the boot fails. In order to exploit this small window of vulnerability, the researchers did create a little USB keyboard, not an actual physical keyboard, but sort of an emulation of a keyboard that would very quickly, much faster than a normal keyboard, hit the enter key. And with that, disrupt the boot process after the disk is unlocked and enable an attacker to read data from the unlocked disk. The blog post outlines a couple of uh, tricks or uh, configurations in order to prevent exploitation of this vulnerability. You can, for example, just automatically reboot the system whenever the boot fails. This, of course, uh, does then uh, disrupt also some of the recovery mechanisms that you may have in case the boot legitimately fails. But that's really sort of the trade-off that you have here, where you either secure the system and end up with a possible unrecoverable system, or you do allow for a disruption of the boot process, which of course could then also be used maliciously. Overall, as they point out, the blog post, very difficult to actually properly secure a system that an attacker has physical access to. And Okta published an interesting blog post uh, with details regarding some attacks that they have observed against multi-factor authentication instead of using some of the more technical means of bypassing multi-factor authentication. What they have seen is good old social engineering. The problem here is how do you reset the second factor, like the authentication token, in case, for example, a user loses that token. What Okta has observed is that attackers are essentially just social engineering the help desk in order to, for example, have two-factor authentication disabled for an account. And in that case, an attacker is then able to just use a username and password they may have obtained via other means like, for example, phishing in order to log in to the account. Have really seen sort of a great solution that does support uh, resetting of two-factor authentication 
it always sort of comes down to some kind of help desk interaction. It's hard to scale these two-factor authentication resets and still keep them secure. In general, even with normal password resets, uh, help desks have proven to be not really the best way to deal with this. It usually comes down to them asking you some questions similar to password reset questions, which often are better asked by a machine that is more difficult to social engineer. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.